Hi guys, this is Massa from The Great White North. So today we have a very special video. Um, I'm going to talk about a new game that is right now on Kickstarter. Uh, that is called Polywork. And stay here for at least three minutes and there will be a huge surprise. Um, so Polywork is it's a new card game. And, and Kickstarter, if you don't know, it's a platform to get crowdfunding. So like uh, instead of going to the bank or something like that, well, if you have a game, something you want to do, anything, uh, you ask people to give you money to make it. And right now it got like 115,000 Canadian dollar, which is like 91,000 US dollar. And so this money go directly to the creator, Kevin Madden, who is creating this game. And, and, the, and the estimated delivery you can see here is June 2022. So um, it's, it's very different, like, from pre-order, uh, you're actually backing somebody to make the game, but all the money goes there, and and you can just choose different pledges. Uh, like, I think the best one is like the three hundred dollar one, where you get six booster box, uh, five exclusive promo. You also get a play mat. Um, but here's a big surprise. So. Kevin is the creator of the game, so I thought he would be the best to talk about the game. Uh, and so that's a, with a great pleasure I introduce you, Kevin. Hello, thank you. Um, so, so, yeah, we are very lucky. I think that's the only interview or only video you make about this game, right? Yeah, right now, this is the only one. There's nothing else out there just yet because I honestly did not believe it was going to get this far. I thought I was going to barely get the funding I wanted, and then I would just get things done, and then it... it surprised me and got all the way up here to 90,000 so yeah no I, I I'm 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 happily surprised and, and I've been talking with you a bit and I'm very happy by your ideas and I think you know what you are doing uh, and uh, I and I, I believe in this product so I wanted you know to give you the opportunity to get a bit more rich and also I wanted to learn more about the game so I, the first question I had is uh, in a nutshell can you explain what polywork is uh, because I showed the Kickstarter page, but like, can you talk a bit about what the game is? Yeah, so it's it's a uh, deck building strategy game, sort of. I mean, as you can see, it, it does have uh, little cool little creatures here, but they're based off of uh, like tadpoles, which is why it's called Polywog. But they're heavily mutated. Anyway, you're going to build a build a deck out of these things, and you've got these and other cards to help you uh, search your deck and play these and uh, hopefully defeat your opponent and win the game. Uh got some pretty cool mechanics with the uh the health system so there's no prize pool no no life force uh your deck is your life so uh as soon as your deck runs out you're you're done you you lose so you got to try and uh manage how well you play your deck and uh, don't pull from it too much or try to even shuffle your discard pile back into your deck if you have the right cards or I strategize see. correctly so so what motivated you to create a pretty card game where there are just so many out there already and so difficult, you know. Well, yeah, the, the the original thought when I first thought of this game was I was going to make a mobile game where you, like, traded and uh, collected different species of these things. But uh, uh, if you know my background, I do YouTube videos for, like, Pokemon and stuff. So I was really big in card games, and I thought, you know what, I'll just make it into a card game since I do, I do no card games, as well as I just started up my own grading company as well. So I do a lot with trading card games already. So it just makes sense for me to... Be in that field i see uh, and like which which card game do you like the most and, and why oh well if you can see behind me here i got a lot of pokemon yeah, stuff I see so, that. so uh, pokemon is my number one and then uh i collected magic on and off for, for a few years i did play a little bit but i really like magic as well but i collect a few others i do have a little bit of metazoo stuff uh i've got some uh i love the artwork in gate ruler but that card game is still pretty new itself and it's uh it's not really seeing much of a market or much of a uh, uh, following for playing. Why did you choose Kickstarter instead of trying to sell the game to a, a big company? I wanted to make sure I maintain control because I have a, a, a way I want my game to work. I want to build my lore and build the world and uh, make it what I want. If I were mm -hmm. to try to sell this to a company and if they wanted it, obviously they would try to change it and make it most as profitable as possible and not care about the creatures in the game or the way the game works. Like, obviously, if you do it everything yourself, it's more risky. So it is very. Risky. Uh, how how confident do you feel like about this project? Like, I'm pretty confident. I've, like I said, I've, um, if anybody has talked to me on Discord and stuff, they know I've already reached out to the printing company. I've already got the first um, 
the first test prints being done. I don't know. They should be coming soon. They had a holiday recently because they're in China, so they're slow right now. But uh, test prints are coming. I've got artists lined up already, so I've already got a set list made up. I, I know where we're going, and it should, shouldn't should be too long before I have everything together. And then the next few well, – that's why it's scheduled for June right now. i got to make yeah. sure playtesting is good and balancing is there. Like if, if I may add something also, like producing a card game – there are much less things that can, like wrong things that can happen. If you if you make a miniature card, uh, a miniature game, and then you lose your your company that makes the miniature, or like you you lose some of your artists, mm. you are really screwed and you can't do anything. But a, a card game, it's really hard not to get something out. Then the question is, yes. will it be really good? But you always get yeah. something out. Where board game can really take long time. Um, so I had I have. Well, I have plenty of questions. I'm very curious about this game, but how many people are working with you on this project? Like, uh, and, and how, how many people would you like to have, you know? Uh... Right now, it's mainly just myself as besides the, uh, the artists I'm using. Mm -hmm. So I do have two. Uh, the, the one uh, main artist is uh, Kendu. He's going to be doing a lot of the work. And the other one, her name is uh, Julia. She is uh, from, I believe, Italy. So she's going to be doing a lot of work as well. So you'll see their names on a lot of cards. And then I've got a couple others I'm going to be using for some special artwork, like uh, extended arts and uh, alternate artwork. Mm -hmm. They're a little mm -hmm. bit more expensive to use. So, uh, but I've already agreed to work with them as well. But I'm going to be getting at least one more, one employee here very soon to help me because it is getting pretty busy and I'm having a hard time keeping up with everything. Yeah, I, I found that uh, the the biggest pitfall when you start a project is not to have the right resource and usually people yeah. think okay well i have enough money that's that's fine but money compared to human resources is complete money is only the first part there you got to have all the help and the resources and the money helps yeah. but it's not the only thing you need yes money only will not make you a good game like that doesn't work uh so so yeah like so you 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 are over 90k 90,000 us dollar right now uh so what was your initial target and like are you changing your plan seeing that maybe you're going to be able to reach like 200,000 who knows like there is still some time so like does it change how, how you lay out like how you think about your company and things like that uh, nothing much is really changing right now the I mean the higher that total amount gets because I was originally aiming for 12,000 that would have allowed me to um, pay for all the artwork to get done because I still need about I want to say nine, 85 or 86 pieces of artwork finished mm -hmm. I've got like I said, the set list is made. I just need the artwork finished. Um, so the, the original 12000 would have paid for all the art as well as to produce the cards. But it didn't leave me m much after that. I was just trying to get this out there. But the higher that goes, the more it leaves for me to um, work on, which is why I put stretch goals in, to work on other things like getting play mats done and the comic book to help explain the lore and where these things come from, things like that. So... Yeah, so typically, like a, a Kickstarter is not really to, or at least one like that, is not really to make money per se. It's to put the product out there, and then that to make it commercial, so then that, so that you can make mm -hmm. money. So if if any of you guys want to to participate to a card game for really small cost, like three hundred dollar for six boxes, and I think it includes a playmat and five promo, and that's an insane value. But it's pretty cheap. It's because the money goes directly to Kevin. You know, it doesn't go through two distributors, LGS and stuff like that, which is not sustainable for a long time. But at the beginning, that's that's where you can do that. So I think that that's that's really nice to be part of this. Uh, so you are talking about the art. I I, I do like the art. I have some uh, some art from Kundu in front of me. Uh, yes. I I really like it. I, I can see the inspiration from from. Pokemon, obviously, but it mm -hmm. looks quite different. Uh, so, like, uh, what are your inspiration? Like, outside of Pokemon, like, what kind of art are you interested in? And like, do you? I'm see gonna some... be trying to do a couple different art styles. Like, mainly, it's gonna stick with this sort of art style, which is sort of Pokemon esque. Mm -hmm. But I'm also gonna be mixing in some, uh, some, um, like, cartoony every now and then. Like, a couple of the uh, alternate art are gonna be more cartoony, I think. I see. And then I have another artist that uh, specializes in more realistic work, so I'm going to get a couple uh, pieces that look kind of uh, more realism. I see. So I'm going to mix it up a little. 
Yeah, no, that, that sounds good. Uh, can you cite some of your artists and is there any artist you would dream to work with? I mean, you mentioned already Kundu, but I don't know Kundu, so you can talk about them a bit. Yeah, uh, the, the, those are two, uh, the two main artists I've mentioned so far. Those two are going to be doing most of the work. Um, I don't have the names of the other two here right now. I just have, I made quick deals with them and then I told them I would be in touch within the next couple of weeks because obviously my funding right now is just everything's out of pocket. So yeah, I'm, I understand that. I'm moving pretty slowly right now. So, so. this is this is from Kundu, those uh, Gloom yeah. Manda on Ambroxol. I I can't say Ambroxol. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird name. It's a weird name. I know that one's tough. And and those uh the the left one it's from Julia Palmieri, which is very pastel. Uh, yeah. This is digital art, but I, I do like it. It's refreshing. Uh, there is a bit of Asian style out of it. Uh, and, and I like this art, but I couldn't find who, who made it. That one says that one says MG Cards because um, I originally started working on this game almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I had these ones done by an artist a while ago. And due to computer changes and everything, I lost the artist's name because it has been... Oh, I see. Almost two years ago, so it just says MG Cards because the, the art is licensed to me. It's purchased by me, so oh, I, I see it. what you mean. You, you could, yeah. No, I, I, I do like. It. So I, I do like the, 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 you know, it's not really pure Pokemon. I like the old style Pokemon. I don't like when there is too much CG. That's why I do like yeah. this pastel aspect. Uh, no, I, I do like that. Um, I, I, like, yeah. I mean, that's an obvious question, but like, it's a card game with cute monster all right aren't you worried yeah. that it have trouble making its own identity there's pokemon digimon and all the something mon yeah it, it's gonna be hard in the market i know it's gonna get called a pokemon clone it's probably gonna be looked at that like that for a little while but i think it's different enough play wise because uh i mean i I've, honestly i've never played digimon so i don't know how that card game works I but uh it's, it plays pretty differently than pokemon it's got similar looking creatures but honestly, that's probably about the end of it. All oh, weaknesses and typenesses, types, that's probably another one. But other than that, I think it's pretty different. So, so yeah, like, so, so, so just to be clear on, on this aspect, I think you focus on the game itself. Uh, yes. and, and the art is to set it, to ground it in an environment. It's completely different to a game that has the art or the IP and that try to make a game so that it works out, you know, so. Yeah, the cards and everything came first. The art, the artwork is being developed after all the, the first sets been made. So yeah, I, I wanted to focus on mechanics, make sure the game works. So, so let's, more, let, let's talk more about the gameplay mechanism. Uh, and let's look at a card uh, so that's called Shade. So can, can, you, can you walk me through like what this card is and like what we can see on the card? Sure. Uh, this is Penimph. He's like one of the, um, like the, the first shadow type, as the uh, lore says there, I think, after attacking. Oh, no. The lore doesn't say what he is. Anyway, the top left, you're going to see a red little gem. Yeah. That is yeah. going to be the play cost for the card. Okay. Uh, stage ones, you can always put down for free. That way, there's no um, blocking somebody from from saving themselves I from see. their deck being attacked. I don't want you, your play, your uh, your turn to be stalled because you ran out of points and now you're stuck because you couldn't protect yourself. Uh, the top there is your HP, honestly, obviously. So yeah, know, that yeah. goes down, you're out. And what is uh, your typing is on the right. And that doesn't do a whole lot, really. The typings help me. Um, like Each typing has like a, a basis. So the uh, the shadow typing, I they see. try to like stay in the game or come back after they're defeated. Grass is more health and defense-based and things like that. But there's also weaknesses, resistances, yeah, I see. and they don't play yeah. too much. They're uh, you generally only minus ten or plus ten, mm -hmm. so they're not there to uh, sway the game, but maybe help you out a little bit. Yeah, like you have card per deck. I am assuming that's how many cards. Yes, uh, per per card of that name. So if you have in the future, say there's three or four different pen and artworks, you're gonna be able to have six different ones in your deck, uh, and that 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 changes per card. I didn't want to have it like some other games where it's always four per everything mm -hmm. because uh, I wanted to be future-proof in case I put something in here that's kind of strong yeah. and needs yeah. to be limited. So I think that'll help me with that. And I'm assuming this seek is it mean it's a common card. Yes. Uh, I'm doing the rarities by uh, C, uh, U, R, things like that. So you know what it is. There's no 
I'm uh, guessing. And take damage, I think we, we're going to talk a bit more after. It's it's like, you are not doing... I guess if if you attack, you do 10 damage to a creature, but if you attack the opponent, mm -hmm. you're going to attack their deck and not their life. Yes, you no would life. attack their deck and they would discard one card. I see. Uh, so ca can you explain, like, talking about that, the main card mechanism uh, and the different cards? I, I have this image here that show kind of a, a layout of the arena. C can you can you explain us like the main mechanism of the game, how a turn would work? Yes. So um, if if you were going through a turn, you would obviously uh, start out draw your cards. So the very first turn, you're going to draw six cards, um, and then you and your opponent put down um, one basic battle pad, which here I have the lily pad, um, because all polywog need to be played onto a battle pad. Mm -hmm. That way they can. Uh, it's like their platform, they, like their little little arena they would play on. I see, I and, see. And uh, these ones here don't do anything, but some of them, like you can see a shadow pad there. Uh, if you're defeated, you get to come back in next turn or something like that. They all have special abilities. But uh, you play your polywog down, and then you can have up to four in play at one time. And they can all attack in any order during your attack phase. Uh, and you can attack uh, the opponent's polywogs in any order you want, unless their cards tell you otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you cannot attack the deck unless there are no polywog on the other field, unless a card specifies otherwise. So the, yeah, but so so to put a creature, you need to have a battle pad, and this yes. is that kind of like a small lotus uh, field of leaf where the the monster is coming on it. Uh, yes. Yeah. And, and so you you start with one, if I understand. So that and yes, you always have one down. That way you you can play from the beginning. You ain't got to worry about at least playing one creature. And you can have only four, so you can't just like you know have ten creature and like overwhelm your enemy. No, that's I like it. And and so so what is I see here polyrad cards. What does this mean? Okay, so your polyrads in uh, in this game, uh, your mana your mana is called polyrads, which ties into the lore. Mm -hmm. uh, so. At the beginning of the game, both players have share a pool of two two points. So you can play uh, a bunch of these cards down with a zero cost uh, up till you have four in your your uh, play area there. But um, as you can see, with the um, with the uh, polyrad card there, what you do when you play these is they actually work for both players. So right now it says add plus three polyrad per turn. So every turn you'll now have five to play with. But that also benefits your opponent as well. So now they have five also, which is uh, a balanced mechanic to make sure nobody gets too much control over the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, but they can also hurt you as well. So if they don't like you having extra points and they think they're good, they can play a card like the uh, Meteor uh, Mallet and smash that card. And now you have no points and they have no points. But I see. If, they're, if they're in a good spot, they ain't got to worry about it. So like so the resource is like... You, you, you can't really like ramp out without ramping also for the opponent. So it, it's really hard to be too far ahead on having a no game. You try, yes. So that's that's something I really like. Uh, but you, so you're telling me like this card give you three resources per turn, but also three resources to the opponent. But there are some cards that are going to destroy it. If, yes. if you prefer, if your deck prefer to be at low resource and like, well, that's interesting. I do like that. And there is a, uh, there is pawn cards here, so what, what are those? So, um, the, the first set here is based heavily on amphibians and water type creatures, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, they're playing in, in a pond area. So, what we can do with that card is that's going to uh, change the entire arena for both players as well. So, as, as it says on there, as long as this is in play, uh, Polywalk can be played with no battle pad. So, uh, that's why there's one on the left there with no pad because. That card allows it to be played without it. Oh, I see, I see. So but if, if say you remove that card or the opponent removes that card, any polywog that have no battle pad are going to be uh, destroyed. So pawn card are like something that modified how the game plays or modifies uh, the rules, kind of. It's, it's like enchantment a bit. I do like this, and I guess this is a deck. There is forgotten zone, which probably is like the exile zone. Uh, yes, so anytime the opponent attacks your deck, your cards don't go to your discard. They go to the Forgotten Zone. That way, I see. you you can't easily just put them back in your deck. And, yeah, oh, I see. I see. Because there are cards that allow you to shuffle your discard back in your deck because your deck is your life. I didn't want to uh, 
yeah. make it impossible. No, that, okay, uh, that looks very interesting. Uh, so I, I do like the aspect, you know, like the, the shared resource, I think that make every game interesting. Uh, I think you also have something where you can cycle some of your cards, like so that you don't get dead draws and you can always do something every turn. Yes. So if you have, um, say, say you have a handful of uh, basic stage ones, you can play them all, um, or you have nothing even. If you have nothing to play, you have, say, two or three points per turn. Mm -hmm. You can spend one point and draw a card, I and see. there's no limit on that. You can, if you have ten points, you could draw ten cards, but mm -hmm. um, you're leaving yourself open to losing the game because now your your deck is ten cards less, I see. and that is your life. So you kind of make like high risk, high reward choice, but then it becomes dangerous so you can be more consistent yes that, that's an interesting aspect uh how about interaction like uh, so i mean because one of the issues is when you have games that tend to be very consistent is that it kind of it can become kind of a goldfish kind of game you know you combo out and you win and then the opponent do nothing so like yeah. what do you have like did you think about interaction and how to kind of you know disturb your opponent so that it doesn't do whatever he wants uh there's there's not really what you can do like if it's not your turn right now there's really nothing you can do uh you can't really play too many there's no trap cards nothing like that but there are some uh, battle pads coming that um if you're polywogger on them and you're attacked it does counteract some of the damage and damage some of their their uh, polywog or even inflict poison on them for attacking certain ones so i mean there's a little bit of um uh fighting back during their turn but there's not a lot so c can you attack so the, if this is my board and you are the opponent can you attack one of my creature here yes if when it's your turn you can attack uh the opponent's creatures you can attack one per card obviously but um uh, you can attack in any order so all four of these could attack the same opponent or two different opponents however you uh figured that it needed to be played out and there's gonna be a lot of strategy there because i see um, there, there is poison involved, and poison in this game stacks. So every time you inflict poison, it it increases. So the, in the interaction goes through the control of the board. Yes. And uh, so it's a bit like chess, you know. You, you, you I, 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 if you let your opponent do whatever he wants with all the, their pieces, then most likely you might die, or you can try to raise them. But there is thing to interact with pretty rat cards, I guess with pawn cards too. You can attack the creature can you can you destroy battle pads so that the creature just there there are it? cards that can be played to destroy those yes and there's even cards that can be just or played to remove them from the battlefield and put them in the forgotten zone so they can't oh, be wow. gotten back i like that i want a, a monster to just fall in the water that sounds cool uh <laughs> so it, uh, so like yeah I, myself i i'm kind of a control player i always like you know i like to make the opponent sad when they play so can I do that in this game? Do you, do you think I can just like say, un, mm, you wanted to do that, but I'm going to disturb you, you know, or like not let them combo or thing like that? I, I think there's a, a way you can like control pretty well how, how much they can attack you. Like mm -hmm. say you played an all grass deck or something. Uh, they have generally higher health, low attacks, but they have higher health. And a lot of them uh, even benefit like each other. If they're beside another grass type, they might. I see. Uh, regenerate 10 health per turn or something or there are certain pads even that give you an extra 10 20 health or give you 10 20 regeneration per turn so so if i understand play... so, sorry go ahead so if you play the a very strategic deck like that it could be hard to make your deck vulnerable so if i understand like the random part of the game is pretty low because you have a lot of way to go through your deck you have yes. a strategy and then the opponent have a strategy and part of your strategy how you can slow down your opponent's strategy so that you can win it's not really like top deck heavy it's it it looks really like you set up your board and then you kind of try to navigate with that so then stack interaction is not that important because it's 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 you have all your board and your opponent have their board and you can interact like that so, yeah, like if you see that, that card and this card right there is one a good example. Uh, it lets you um, search your deck for a stage one and then play it or put it in your hand. Then you can play it from there. So there are quite a few different versions of cards that let you search. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps you yeah. go through and take some of the random aspects out of the game. No, that's uh, I, I, I that feel a bit like vintage magic. You know, like you do whatever you want. And that, that's why I wanted to know about like the 
how much control you have. That, that's good. Good. Uh, yeah, like you said, so like there is no life. Uh, it's 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 your uh, you win by by meeting out your opponent. And yeah. So that's good. It's a mill game. And uh, so like. Would that be bookmark heavy? Uh, book, you know, like, do I need tons of token and dices? Dice, sorry. Oh. There are no tokens. I'm I'm leaving tokens out purposely because I want just cards in your deck to be played. That way, you don't have to worry about tokens. No, bring in extra cards, nothing like that. Um, damage counters will probably probably be pretty necessary because everything's gonna have damage that remains at the end of the turn. And um, poison markers are gonna be there, but uh, I'm gonna make those available with. Strat or with theme decks and things like that. I see. So yeah, it's, they will be available. It's always annoying. I don't have those those life dice, and I don't know what to do. So if you bring them, if it's included yeah. in the package, that's that's something really good. Um, so how long do you think a game would take, like in average? I I would say probably fifteen minutes or so, but uh, that's probably average, fifteen yeah. minutes, I would guess. So that, that's pretty quick, you know. That's that's not like one hour or something like that. Oh, no, 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 definitely I not. See. Um, uh, uh, so you see this more like a best of one or like a best of three with sideboard and stuff like that? Um, I, I would probably, uh, the way I'm envisioning it is play or best of one. I wouldn't, I mean, you could you could play multiple matches yeah, if you wanted to, yeah. but uh, I see it as a play, a best of one. Well, I guess also like to make it a game with sideboard, you need more cards. So that's going to come later on. If, yeah. if, if it if it comes to the game, uh, and, and do you think like do you think the game is complex, not complicated, but complex enough? Like there is enough play to it that we can get uh, tournament player to kind of spend time building decks, having tournaments. You know. I like think that. so. I'm I'm trying to um, build it to, to where it is like that. Mm -hmm. That's why there's so many different battle pads. They have different effects. So I see. not not just having creatures because they only have one attack each. They don't have multiple different things. They can only do one thing. Mm -hmm. But depending on the order you play them in, or what battle pad you put them on, what mutations you put on them, um, they can do a lot of different things. Yeah, because I I do want to uh, like once this is out, I want to have like weekly tournament at our shop and on Discord, like we have always been doing. So I I want to know if people will enjoy playing. You know, that's and and. and people around me are very competitive so they don't like luck and they, they like to use their brain cell you know uh, yep okay yeah, I, hope it's, know. I hope it's very competitive that's what i'm aiming for so like um um coming back to the kickstarter uh so that's the the first set obviously uh it's called origin i believe yes so how origin. how many cars are you planning to have uh right now it's planned at 100 but i mean that I might add a few more because it has gotten a lot of attention and mm. I might put a couple secret rares in there because now um, originally secret rares wouldn't have been a good idea because if I sold a hundred boxes or if I sold 50 boxes, nobody's going to get one. Yeah. 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 Now if I'm selling, I don't know, close to a thousand boxes or whatever, it, it makes sense to maybe throw a couple of those in there because they will be easy enough, not easy enough, but they will be uh, enough in population to where you'll see them. Yeah, so m my view on that, and that come to my next question, you know, it's yeah, it's like how many rarities uh, do you have? Like, I don't especially like cards where I need to, even if I bury like ten boxes, I will not have it, you know, because yeah. I, I then I understand the pain. Then you need to have enough second market, and then price are driven like that. So. Um, like those secret where do you think like it would be like one every box, one every five box, one, I don't know. Yeah, if I do the secret rares, I'm probably going to put them at just over the uh, elemental rare. So probably one every 32 packs, 33 okay, packs. So okay. not much harder to pull than the elemental. I don't want my cards to be terribly hard to find. Cause yeah. I, I do open like Pokemon and stuff and they have like 30 secret rares per per thing. And you have, you'd have to buy 700 boxes. To pull these things yeah and like i i think well first i, I think it's waste of paper uh you it end is. up having yeah. so much bulk uh, i i think it's not ecologically correct i think it is it, and it's just not fun like when you open like your 20s 20s box and you don't have anything and you just that's yeah not you fun. you feel bad it, it's yeah. a bad feeling yeah so like um yeah i i wanted to to ask you though, so like what are the different rarities? So you, you, you mentioned the secret rare, but what, what else do you have? So there's commons, uncommons, um, 
rares, double rare, ultra rare, and elemental rare. I see. Well, I think so. There's six rarities. I think I have a picture of uh, an elemental rare. If I come back to this. Um, so I think here on this picture yes. I have a rare on the left and this is an elemental rare and if I understand well the elemental rare is it's like this creature but instead of being just shadow it's shadow with lightning kind of a hybrid kind of thing yeah the way with the way the lore works because these creatures are created by mutations each species can have uh, alternate um, typings mm -hmm. so it's like a type swap creature and the elemental rares aren't really much stronger, if stronger at all, than a regular rare. They just count as a stage one and have a high play cost. So, nice. um, they're even though they're going to be harder to pull, they shouldn't hurt the game because they play as pretty much like a stage three. Like, like you so say, really cool you to look say, at. You, you should get, in average, like one per box. Yes. So it's it's not you know like, it's not too hard to get you know. Um, yeah. Especially when I think box are like fifty fifty dollar now or sixty dollar, so it's yeah. If you, so I don't want them to be terrible. And like it says here at the bottom, these are limited to two per deck, so you don't yeah. even need to collect a giant set of these. You only need two yeah, if you want to yeah. play a, a full set of them. So like in average, how many box do you think one need to to have enough cards to make a competitive deck? Uh, I would hope only like two, maybe one or two, because yeah. right now the set is kind of low. It's only a hundred cards, yeah. so that's not terrible. And um. There's only going to be six elemental rares, so there's that. Ultra rares, there's only going to be a few of those as well, mm -hmm. like maybe six as well. And then the rest are ultra rares, double rares, and low rarities. Uh -huh. And those have pretty good pull rates. How about somebody like me who wants to have every card? Like, how many bucks you think I need to get? Uh, I would hope, if you're lucky, you yeah, could I'm probably do it with that. seven boxes. <laughs> you could probably do it with seven boxes, but um, that would be... It's 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 all luck at that point. Yeah. But like I said, six elemental or if you open six boxes, that should give you uh, about seven to eight elemental rares, which is going to be the hardest to pull at this point. Yeah. So, with only six different ones, okay. you got a you got a chance there. Yeah. All right. Well, if if I don't, I will ask you <laughs> if you can trade some with me or something. Uh, so I I I really like like foil card, holo card, whatever you call them, just shiny stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? Do you have some plan regarding that? Yes, the um the, the test packs that are coming, there's 11 cards in each test pack. Um, I want to say, I can't remember if I did five of ho in hollow and six non-hollow, but either way, uh, the, the hollows and the non-hollows are, are coming. To We'll see them soon. And, I and this is just a test. This is just a test. Then we're going to test out different ways to do the hollows and things. So it is coming. So like, it's not every card can be hollow. It's just... Some special one, right? Um, they're all gonna have a, a regular and a an, oh, okay. and a hollow form, but um, the higher rarities, like the the uh, ultra rares and elemental rares, are only holographics, so you don't have to worry about pulling two oh, versions of those. I, I see. Yeah, it's always make you happy when you pull something very shiny and yes, fresh. I love holographic. I love I love shiny cards. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, yeah, like in terms of like when we can get the, the card, you know. Uh, when do you think the first set will be shipped? So, like, you think June? Yeah. It is set for June, but if, um, because it ain't gonna, I should have enough, the art, I should have all the artwork done, I would think, within two months after Kickstarter, because mm -hmm. I have multiple artists doing this, but then I'm gonna do the first printing, I'm gonna do a, um, a cheaper type of board, cardboard, for the first print, so I can just take them to the card shop, and uh, we're gonna build decks, and play, and yeah. test it, and and I but hope then, we can play oh, together, and I will give you my feedback. Yeah, I can probably send you some to, to test it out. Yeah, and, and but, uh, people can review. As long as initial testing and balancing is is well, I'm hoping to get them out before June. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is there just just as a yeah. like, safety net. Yeah. No, I mean, and and and, and you know, like, I know how it works, and uh, it, it's just to get an idea because people have to pay now. That I mean, you, yes, you, you pledge if you pledge hundred dollar. Uh, the, the Kickstarter stop in seven days, so in seven days the money will be taken out of your bank account. And you have to yes. understand, you have to wait until the game is done. That's why it's so cheap. Uh, but so it's good to give an idea. So next summer, hopefully, we can yeah. play, most likely. Uh, and is there any uh, is there any difference between like Kickstarter card and those that will not uh, be yes, Kickstarter? Uh, 
I forgot to show you the difference there. It is on the Kickstarter though. If you want to go to the I, updates, I think I, I I I pulled it out here. Is that the right? Oh, thing? okay, you got it right there. Yeah, yeah there, there you go. Um, the Kickstarter set has the uh, Kickstarter logo. Uh, the set name is Origins, and there is no shadow on the inside of the uh, art box. I hear, yeah. I so see. shadowless, non-shadowless. I kind of stole that one, but uh, uh -huh. people like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's cool. That's that's. But uh, and when when the second printing comes out, like um. If this is popular enough and people want it, but they can't get their hands on it, I will alter the set list a little bit and then uh, rebrand it as Origins 2, mm -hmm. remove mm -hmm. the Kickstarter logo, put the shadow in, and then do another printing as Origins 2. That way, Kickstarter cards don't lose their value, but everybody can get their hands on the cards so that they can play. Uh, and like, um, is there, another, uh, is there uh, other reason to back right now and just not wait for the release like if you back now are you getting some promos and stuff like that yes there's lots of promos you're getting and um they have like an extended artwork the uh the six different promos you've got some right there the second image from the bottom is one of the promos the, uh, oh these are all promos oh, right yeah. here. so you well, can see the art okay cool. is extended to the edges oh i see and uh and this tentacroak over here he is a uh he is a kickstarter promo of an elemental rare oh i see uh, and, uh, and I believe you also get a playmat if you buy your case. Yeah, there's a playmat coming for the um, the top two tiers, I believe, get the uh, the playmat as well as all the decks. The lower tiers have to uh, add those add-ons. I see. Um, and like, yeah, no, I I do like the art, and I, I notice there is a, a lot of a lot of those monster reserves around water. Uh, will that be always like that? Like Polywog will be a game okay. about like water creature. Or? Uh, no, this, the first set, I mean, it's always going to have its origins there, and it's always, as you can see, the logo down there is the uh, lily pads. Mm -hmm. But that is because mm -hmm. I am um, building this game from a, I want it to have an, a, an origins, which is why the first set's called Origins. So a place is coming from. Um, real quickly, in a nutshell, the basis is a meteor fell out of the sky. It's got radiation, and it's mutating tadpoles. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, they're becoming these creatures. But uh, that's because in real life, tadpoles and frogs are already susceptible to mutations um, from pollution. Mm -hmm. So, um, but in the next couple sets, you're going to see the radiation seeping into insects and fish, uh, and then you're going to see mammals and birds, things like that. So th it's going to spread. It just has its origins in water. Oh, I see. So like the set will kind of continue the story kind of thing? Yes. I'm trying to use the set to explain it, but there's also going to be other things. Like I am going to be working on the comic soon. Yeah. So okay. to help explain it, but this is where we're coming from is the water. All right, that sounds cool. Do you have plan in your head for the next two years, five years, maybe ten years? Like, did you think ten, ten years is a long way? Ten yeah. years is a long ways yeah. off. So uh, I don't really know. Ten years, hmm. two years, I would think we're we're still pretty good. Like I said, I've got plans for uh, set two being uh, mainly insects. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have those. With a few new mechanics, I'm I'm already thinking about some bees and some hive type mechanics, so you can like swarm the Swarm the play area. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah that's cool. Then we're going to see some fish, uh, and then you're going to see things like, I mean, you're, you're already in water, you're aquatic, you might not need a battle pad. Insects might not need them either because they're flying. So there's going to be some changes coming up. I've got plans for the next few sets. So, yeah. But, but like, yeah, it's, it's not it's only this set. You have some ideas for later sets. Yes. And now, right now, you're at, how much are you right now? Ninety-one thousand dollar. That's nice. Uh, like if your your dream come true, how much? Like if how much do you want? Like if you can like dream of how much you would need to make the best game. I am world. perfectly happy right here. All if right. it goes nowhere from here, I am I am good. I would have I never dreamed it would get this high. Every day I see that number, it's just insane. Yeah, I see. Okay, and um, uh, finally, can you show us your favorite card or new spoiler? Or... Just something to, to make us excited. Uh, I did send you one image of the newest artwork. That is um, the Polypod. Yeah. And it's one of it's it's really kind of one of my favorites because I come up with the design and everything myself. I I drew it myself, not this one. Mm -hmm. I mine was pretty crude. Yeah. But uh, I gave the artist very very specific details because mine wasn't terrible. It just wouldn't work on a card. But the Polypod is going to be pretty important. You're probably going to see it in a lot of decks. And there's going to be premium polypods and different versions that let you search different stage creatures or things like that. I see. So, but I love the way it works, the lore. 
how you because it's what keepers and the comic and stuff are going to be using to capture and battle these creatures oh i see i see okay well that sounds cool uh i mean just to wrap things up uh, i'm going to show the kickstarter again so if people so first if you guys want to participate to this adventure this project you can go to kickstarter you can pledge if you're in canada and, and you want me to help out i'm trying to do a, a mass ordering uh just to save on shipping uh and uh so you can contact me directly you can go to the infinity discord i think most of you know how to reach me uh if you pledge you can, if you just want to know what's going on with poly work you, you can just pledge like one dollar if you just want to check it out so then you can see the updates and comment and you can go to the discord of polywog and and kevin kind of really replied quick and like that was a good interaction so really like you can contact me you can contact kevin uh really don't don't let this opportunity pass uh if you, you if you want to be part of it or even if you are scared of kickstarter you can contact me uh i think uh I, i'm really excited for this game and hopefully maybe like in a couple of months three months maybe we will start to see some cards and then hopefully kevin will come back and we can talk again i would as soon as i have um the play of the first playable print with all the cards i am gonna send you some so you can test it out because it's, it's gonna need some balancing work there's yeah hp problems th there's gonna be some work all right that's great a any final word like you want to say something uh, no, just thanks for having me. I'm glad you're excited. I, I'm excited, as you can probably tell. Oh, no, I just, I, I'm excited. It's, it's, it's been come true here. All right. Well, you know, comment below and, and contact us if you have any questions. Thanks.